Hello, and thank you for joining us for a very special edition of Archetizer Live. To those of you who've attended one of our previous talks, welcome back. And if this is your first event, thank you for joining us. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Paul Keskes. I'm the Editor-in-Chief at Archetizer. And today I am thrilled to have the opportunity to chat with Ma Yansong of Mad Architects, who will be presenting some of this firm's boldest new projects and sharing his vision uh, for the future of architecture and public space. While we wait for the room to fill up, I want to encourage all of you to say hi in the chat on the right side of your screen and let us know where you're from. It's always amazing to see such a global audience and especially today as we have people from China and people from America and everybody in between, um, which is really incredible. Now, as many of you probably know already, uh, we recently launched our 11th annual A Plus Awards program, a global architectural awards program designed to celebrate the world's best architecture and the people that help bring it to life. The team at Mad Architects certainly falls into this category. And if you'd like to follow in the footsteps of Ma and other renowned architects and designers around the globe, we encourage you to submit your projects in this year's, in this year's program. We'll provide a little more information on that a little later on. Now, here are a few quick pointers about our live platform. If you have any technical difficulties with the stream, you can click on the help icon in the bottom left corner, and you'll see a few options for improving your picture, the sound, and so on. It's worth noting that there will be a recorded version of the talk, so you can catch up on anything you missed or share this with your colleagues after the event. Thirdly, uh, questions. You can type anything you like in the chat, but if you have a specific question you'd like to ask, we recommend you use the questions tab. Just click on the questions icon in the bottom right of your screen and then type your question there. If you see a question from someone else you'd like to um, hear, you can upload it and we'll, ask, we'll aim to ask Ma the most popular questions a little later on. And finally, feel free to use the react button whenever you see something you like on the screen. Now I'm thrilled to introduce Ma Yansong. A Beijing born architect, Ma is recognized as an important voice for a new generation of architects. As the founder and principal of Mad Architects, Ma leads design across various scales, including urban planning, urban complexes, municipal buildings, museums, theaters, concert halls, and housing, as well as art and design. The firm has projects located in China, Canada, France, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, and the United States. In recent years, Ma has created a series of imaginative works, including the A-plus award-winning Harbin Opera House, which you can see behind me, Absolute Towers, China Philharmonic Concert Hall, Phoenix Museum of Migration, and many more. In 2014, Ma was selected as the principal designer for the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art, which made him the first Chinese architect to design a major cultural landmark overseas. Parallel to his design practice, he has also been exploring with the public the cultural values of cities and architecture through domestic and international solo exhibitions, publications, and artworks. And with that, I will hand over the mic to you, Ma. What have you got in store for us today? Hello, Paul. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure uh, to be here with all your audiences, share my work. Um, uh, today, my um, uh, title is uh, Surreal Land. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, there's no architecture term in this title, but uh, I think that uh, shows my interest uh, to uh, architecture also related to my latest work, the Chuzhou Sports Park. So I'm going to show several projects and, uh, and uh, explain this uh, story. Um, I would like to start from very early project. It's, you see this uh, reflect bubble in the traditional Hutong context in Beijing. And this is a real photo, uh, but this project actually started 
from a, a very conceptual sketch without any commission. Nobody commissioned us to do that, but we propose an image says, in the future of Hutong, which is this traditional housing in China, we like very abstract architecture uh, in it. Uh, and years later, some people saw our image and they like it and they want to build it. Uh, so we actually realized a couple of these uh, steel bubbles. In this bubble is uh, actually a, a toilet because in the traditional Hutong housing, they don't have a private toilet. That that's uh, that's that's when I was a ch child. Uh, when I was a children, I grew up in the Hutong courtyard. I had to go to uh, the public toilet outside uh, your home. So that's that was the purpose for this uh, building, and uh, it has a very different look from traditional buildings. And so people ask why you create, you know, this very abstract reflective uh, architecture in the traditional context. I think this image explained the reason because I think we don't want to repeat a fake uh, old architecture, but uh, by creating this abstract surface re reflection can show the surrounding and, uh, and uh, uh, somehow uh, disappeared into the context because you, you will see the, the surrounding buildings, the sky, the trees um, in this reflection. And the reflection is twisted. So um, the building shows the form, but it doesn't appear uh, like very strong volume. Um, so maybe that project, this early project shows my interest that uh, we believe the new architecture can be different from the traditional buildings, but somehow they could um, build up this uh, conversation together. They, they, they should talk to each other, but in a very uh, unique way. And later on, we build another project. Uh, it's, a, it's a carry on this uh, um, methodology. So we build more bubbles around this traditional neighborhood. Uh, in another uh, community of Beijing, uh, traditional uh, courtyard housing um, um, area, we build uh, this uh, a kindergarten. So, so this this uh, uh, a photograph shows the uh, the roof of the new building, but you can see in the center of it, there is a traditional uh, old a uh, courtyard house and this shows the relationship because the uh, the old house has a sloping roof gray color uh, it's a it's a it's been very typical uh, image of uh, uh, of traditional buildings and uh, the, the the new building has a flat roof so because um, the idea was when the kids uh, they you know they get up out of the uh, class, they can go up to the roof and then they can play there. So we need a flat roof and this building is much bigger than the traditional building. So they have a different uh, appearance. And that's why we also applied uh, a different material, different color to it, different uh, uh, also the, uh, uh, the structure. So the new building and the old building somehow shows very different volume shape um, with, with, with this contrast. I think the, the new roof feels a little bit like a, a, a land that you don't normally see in traditional uh, urban context. Uh, I think it's a little bit like a Mars. It's a red color and uh, it's uh, so um, um, unfamiliar with, so people don't normally go there and find uh, um, a big flat uh, area. Um, and we got the same question, like 
in this uh, context, why don't we um, repeat this uh, uh, sloping roofs? Um, so is, is it more contextual, uh, you know, to repeat it? Um, but my idea was um, we don't want to build a more fake historical building. And um, especially for education facilities, when kids, you know, running around in the new roof, when they look at the traditional building, it's, 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 it's more, you know, the, the, the angle of it, the observation angle is more unique because they know they're from, they, they, they observe the history from a very um, um, a different uh, uh, time and space. So that way um, they wouldn't um, uh, ignore uh, uh, the history. They actually will pay more attention and more cherish the real history. I think that's more important. So, um, but the contrast also make the new architecture surreal. Uh, that's, that's the word I, I will use uh, often today because th the surreal atmosphere would bring the curiosity to people. Like they will wonder, why is this? Why the difference, right? They will start to uh, think. And it, it's not, for me, it's not just about new and old. It's also about, it's new, but it's, uh, in, in the deep play, it's contextual. So in this image, you see the new architecture, old architecture, and nature, and how people involved in these relationships. I think that's something I find from traditional buildings, for example, courtyard house, why the architecture, they're, they're um, on foresight and there's a, a, a void in the middle because the courtyard space is actually the focal uh, point and that's most important uh, space. It, it's, it's a void, it's a, a, a negative space where the nature and people can meet and people can meet other people. That's most important thing in our life. It's not just uh, about objects and the buildings. So I think to build up this uh, relationship is it, more important. Uh, there's another um, project. It, it's a, uh, you see this black tower in the, in the photo. Uh, that's the project we built. It's, there's nothing tradition here. It's uh, all modern new cities, right? And there's uh, um, uh, the largest green park uh, in Beijing. And um, I see the towers around the park because the park is beautiful. Everyone wants to, you know, build their house and the high rise and the facing the park. The park become a beautiful nature, but at the same time become a resource. Like people wants to, you know, <laughs> having more views. Um, but in in that case, architecture also build a wall in between. Uh, human and nature, right? Because you want to um, maximum the view around it, around the park. Um, but in our case, we are building this project on the edge of the park, but we don't want to build a wall. We want to extend the nature uh, into the urban context. So we want to blur this uh, boundary in between the two. So this architecture is large, it's a, it's a tower, it's a modern architecture, right? Normally we don't talk about nature in this kind of a, a scale, uh, but so I was wondering maybe we can bring the nature um, like ink paintings, like, uh, like mountains, like waterfalls, like those metaphor uh, into the large scale architecture. So this is, a, it's actually, uh, architecture model, but uh, it's a life model. It, it has a moss and uh, it's like water and the penzai. So we, we have the those uh, architecture shapes. Then we um, 
scale it up, right? Making it a uh, uh, big uh, towers. This is a two office tower on the edge of the park. So from the um, the lake inside the park, you when you look at here, um, the organic language and the uh, and this uh, uh, profile uh, make the tower feels like a part of the park, part of the nature. And here is that on the other side, when you go into this uh, um, complex, we build also smaller scale buildings. And we create this uh, green valley. It's actually open urban space plaza in the middle of the, uh, the development. Uh, feels like very human scale, uh, natural um, garden. And we insert it into very dense urban context. And uh, here is a public building. It's a, a opera house uh, in Harbin. Um, you don't see much buildings around. This is a rather uh, a flat site, but um, there's a two-dimensional uh, information on the on the on the ground. Is there's actually a big river next to the site. Also, the wetland park uh, around the building. So the horizon is a character uh, here. So we want this building um, not uh, a standalone object, but more blend into the horizon. So that's why you see the angles of the wall and uh, there's a curvy uh, shapes uh, connect to the ground. Uh, there, there are two theaters in this opera house. There's a, uh, one large, one small, and we uh, angle them uh, so they can form an uh, entrance uh, plaza uh, in the middle. And here you see how architecture touched the ground, right? This is a facade gently uh, merged into the horizon. So um, it, it, it blurred the boundary in between um, the nature or the existing nature and architecture. And people can literally walk onto this facade and they can climb the building uh, around, around this facade. Because normally, you know, the opera house only open during the night. But what about the daytime? Because this is a very beautiful park and people, when they come here, they want to climb the building and be able to see uh, the surrounding uh, uh, nature. So here we provide this opportunity. So uh, they can continue their journey vertically. Uh, and then they will arrive this uh, uh, amphitheater on the roof. And uh, the horizontal movement suddenly become uh, vertical. Here they will focus, focus on the sky above them. So uh, I would say this journey is a key for this building because it's, uh, uh, it's a spiritual uh, uh, experience. I think um, this is a more than function for me because, because I think the function of a music hall, for example, people come here, listen music, right? But they are not listen music the same as that they you know, stay in their bedroom, listen music. They come here, they share the music with other people in the room. So the, the, the atmosphere is more important. And architecture should do the same as a music. We create atmosphere. So they come here, they see the nature, they see the light and the sky, you know, they, they will feel something. And here you see the, the, uh, the position uh, for the architecture. It's a very large building, very tall, but you don't feel the pressure. It's a, it feels very um, inviting and engaging. Um, so it's very uh, gentle. And here's a, the night view, the light glow from inside. It's very open. And here the image behind you. <laughs> so also a lot of a natural light because we want people uh, enter the building and feel it's almost like outdoor. Like a lot of a natural light and they see the surrounding park. Um, and then later we, we did another uh, small building. This is a library um, in 
Hainan Island in China. It's an oceanfront site. It's a beautiful view here. Um, the scale is rather small. And here you see this uh, undulating uh, surface. I wrap around the building and create a space like uh, like a wormholes. <laughs> you can you can um, find all these uh, walls and the roof and the floor. They're uh, being continuous. And this is a bird view, right? This is you see the um, the sky, the ocean. It's beautiful. It's peaceful. It's it's. I mean, without building, it's also <laughs> beautiful. But when I visit the site at the beginning, I ask myself, you know, this is a beautiful, but uh, uh, the beauty is been there every day. It's, it's like uh, uh, um, uh, um, objective. It's like you, you, you come here, you, you know it's there. But what's more important is you stand there and observe. So how you observe or or the angle you you um, you observe is quite important so the architecture probably can provide that angle um, so here is a roof of this building it's undulating it's a go up and down and then a lot of holes uh, we call this building a uh, cloudscape because um, it's a white uh, it feels very light and floating and a lot of holes. Um, and then later on, I'll show you the what's in, inside. You see the bookshelf, right? This is a library and the balconies. And people go in there and uh, look at the view and the read books. And inside, we also have uh, this reading space stepping down and towards the ocean and the natural light coming down uh, from the sky. And you see the darkness uh, and the brightness. So the, you feel the depths of the space. It's a tiny uh, building. So uh, we want the complicity in the space. So when people go in there, they find the, the, comfort, the comfortable corner, you know, the, uh, the, the space they like in, in this small uh, space. Here, when you turn around, you will see uh, the view like this. And you can sit here and then read your book. And people ask why, I mean, uh, when you read, you have to have this view. <laughs> because uh, you want to focus on the book, right? People ask that. I want to answer that uh, similar to the question why we go to concert hall and, uh, and listen to music. Uh, I think it's more like, uh, reading an, a good book it's not just about the text it's also about um when you close a book what do you feel what what the emotion you come up right like like that's a, where the journey really start so i think the space the public space the reading space can provide that so people come here they are ready for this journey when they see that horizon, the sky, uh, the ocean, they will know, you know, this is a space withdraw from the reality, from the daily life, from the very practical, you know, you know um, things. So they were ready to start a, a very spiritual journey. I think that's what is um, very lacking in our lives. I mean, um, in, especially in big cities, like um, we want escape. Uh, some, some, we want to find some space and time where we can dive into for a moment. So I think that's the surreal uh, space could provide for people. And here the staircase inside the uh, space. Um, so after that, I start to uh, think about this uh, question: uh, What's the quality of a public space? Normally, what we'll, we'll see, you know, 
full of people, right? It's a popular, like people wants to go there. We think that's good public space. But I think it's more like a popular book, a popular uh, music, popular movie. I think what, what people gain, what's in, what each individual gain from it is more important. Uh, than you know how many people in, in that uh, uh, space, right? So here in this image, uh, it's a uh, you see uh, a series of green mountains like a volcanoes, right? Uh, that's uh, actually uh, our design for Chujo Sports Park. It's a uh, um, stadiums. Uh, there are large buildings, but we bury all this building into green mountains. And actually, people can walk on those mountains. You see, this is one stadium with a with a um, a standard football core course in 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 the middle, uh, and that's a lake. So this is a quite large site. I mean, it's easily um, attract a lot of people, right? It's like a, it's a big space, uh, but I, I think maybe full of people is not not enough like we want people but uh what they came from this space i asked myself uh, the uh, the question so we we made a building like this the architecture almost disappear um into this uh natural form and we cover this building facade with a green um and you see these uh, um, uh, ramps uh, around the building. So this actually, uh, you know, people can climb those mountains and they can walk around and, and they can go up to the mountain top and have the beautiful view around. So this become a serious uh, land art almost like, because you never find this kind of uh, mountains in real nature. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a artificial. It's, it's nature, but it's a little futuristic. Why? I mean, it's, uh, it feels, feels like, it's not like a machine, right? It's, a, it's not like a science, science fiction uh, battleship, but it, it's, it's natural. Um, but it also has a futuristic feeling. So I, I, I was thinking about the word futuristic because sometimes maybe we want to uh, define. We want to call the those those um, something unfamiliar with. Uh, we call them futuristic. That belongs to something another world, right? We, because we don't see them in our uh, uh, daily life in, in reality. So that's surreal, right? That's that's something new. Um, and then we have to turn this concept into reality. <laughs> So, so I think architecture is interesting because you always have this dream, uh, you call it surreal, but then you have to make it real. And then it's become a physical world. A world. And here you see uh, a section, uh, you see the, the floors, the, the columns, and uh, there's a big uh, stadium space in it. And on the outside, you see uh, the trees. So we have to put the trees and the people on the roof. So it's quite a, a challenging uh, structurally. And here inside is sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, I think Ma got disconnected for one second, but hopefully he can. Uh, join us again in one second. Just give him, uh, just give him a minute. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for joining us. Um, I'll take this opportunity um, whilst he's hopefully reconnecting um, to actually open a poll. So, if you're interested in uh, following in the footsteps of Mad and Ma Yansong. Um, I'm just going to publish this poll. And if you're interested in 
um, finding out anything else about the A plus awards, um, you can request a submission guide and you can um, also register for program updates and deadline reminders. Um, just let us know by clicking on the polls tab and then you can um, you can join us there. Um, Ma, are you are you back? You'd like to turn your camera? I'm, I'm back, but I don't know how. I mean, why my camera is not on? I don't know. <laughs> so there's um there's a, a button um at the bottom um next to settings uh, that says camera. And yeah, I see that, but it seems I cannot. Uh, I'm not allowed to 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 turn it on. Oh, that's strange. Well, we can hear you. Um, so if you'd like to continue, um. Can you uh, can you control the presentation still? Yes. Okay. Would you like to continue um, presenting, and then maybe we can figure out the camera as we go? Sure. Yeah. This. Uh, oh, sorry about so that. I was I was uh, I was talking about the structure, right? This is shows what's in it. That's a quite large uh, functional space. You know, that's that's a large space inside the mountain. So we make sure the mountain is architecture, right? It's a, it's a useful uh, in it. And here is another mountain. This is another volcano. Inside, you see the section is a little different. Uh, this is a swimming pool with a different kind of space, different structure, and also um, the natural light. So we want to make sure each inside each mountain you have a natural light, natural ventilation. So it's a it's a very functional architecture. And then. And then we start to building, right? This is actually, we, we're at the, um, the end of the first phase. Like we built, we, we finished this uh, stadium uh, and now we're building um, the, the other stadium, the football court, the, uh, the, the basketball court, the swimming pool. And this photo you see uh, actually uh, the football uh, stadium. Uh, you see the uh, the grass, uh, the green uh, hill, and the, the roof, right? And and most uh, functional part uh, in this stadium uh, are under the green roof. So this green, it's uh, it is an open uh, space, uh, connect to the landscape, so people can walk. Uh, onto uh, this green slope, and they can actually enter the stadium from anywhere. <laughs> so it's a little bit hard to manage the, you know, the, the sec security, the gate, and like for 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 the um, for the um, uh, daily use. Because we 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 want to consider here is a is a public park. Not just a building. So here you see the openings on the on the uh, on the on the uh, grass and uh, and the, and shows that what's in it. There's a, a structure in it, and and the roof feels like a floating, very large span uh, steel structure. And here you see the uh, the the relationship. So it's a large building, but it's uh, you don't see much you see only the roof which is a, a little like a uh, cloud uh, floating above the uh, green hill and now where you see the the landscape the uh, the water system and on the on the right hand side we're constructing more buildings those are volcanoes so uh, maybe three years later we'll see uh, the complete uh, projects uh we see this of course as a functional sports facility but what's more important is people can come here when they're leisure time right? not just for games but also you know every day every morning every evening and every weekend with, with their family and the, and the dogs and the kids you know and so we want this to be um uh, a space not for just for competition purpose, but also for entertainment, also for the uh, leisure. And here the entrance uh, go into it. So, so that's the uh, the structure, the material under the green uh, slope. 
It's also very large open space, can hold a lot of people, and that's a staircase go into the main uh, audience floor, and the columns, and all concrete. So we want to show a little roughness uh, under the mountain. And you see the rhythm of the, uh, uh, the concrete structure, uh, the, the force, the, the strength, you know, um, a little bit different from uh, the exterior. So here is, you see this uh, hallway uh, and columns. Um, it's all open space, open air space that's um, concrete. The seatings, uh, it, it's become more like a, a graphic version of, uh, of, of mountains, right? It's become pixel, uh, 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 pixelated um, um, green um, hill. And here you see the, uh, the sports uh, space. The roof of it is very lightweight and uh, uh, very large span uh, because we want to um, feel the, the, the roof is like a floating above us. It's not heavy, but, um, it's, but we want a net, enough natural light coming through. Uh, so the, the whole seating area belongs to you know, the open um, landscape. So here's another view. And this also shows another uh, like parking, like a uh, shuttle bus parking area. Uh, it's also under the uh, green slope. And here you see this uh, hollow roof uh, from distance. You see the mountains and you see the modern architecture. So we, we often, you know, deal with this uh, both. We want our architecture to be part of the nature and not repeating uh, the modern uh, uh, urban uh, forms. Um, uh, so can, you can imagine in the future there will be like more series of uh, volcan green volcanoes, right? So it's a green open space. That's a good, right? That's a, everyone knows that's open to, to people, you know, people want to come here. Um, but like I mentioned before, why volcanoes? Why, you know, there's a surrealness to the shape, to the artificial nature. Uh, because, you know, we want the whole thing become a land art where people can um, start to wandering around or thinking um, about the sky, the land, the earth, thinking about the relationship between themselves and the, the world. So that's, that's what I lo lo uh, love about land art. I think when we go to the beautiful mountains, uh, desert, ocean, we, we find that power uh, can um, in, enhance us to talk to the um, to the uh, nature. So I think that's something we want to provide to normal people who's having busy life in our modern cities. So um, that's the I think the the quality I'm looking for uh, in the public uh, projects. We want to provide the moment where people can escape from reality and uh, wandering around uh, uh, their spiritual or emotional uh, world. Okay, I'm showing uh, two more projects also under construction, but uh, just started, so uh, we have to wait uh, maybe two, three uh, more years uh, to see them. Uh, one of those are um, the Lucas Museum of Narrative Arts in Los Angeles. Um, mm -hmm. And this is a rendering I'm showing. Uh, you see the downtown LA and uh, 
and uh, um, the museum. The museums uh, look like a, a floating objects, right? It's a, it's a little bit, uh, it's horizontal building uh, floating above trees. And uh, it's quite different from the modern architecture, but I think somehow it, 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 it's, it's having conversation with the mountains far away. It's, it's, it's been interesting, like I see architecture um, become opportunity to, to talk to the land more uh, than uh, the buildings around it. Because I think that's uh, more timeless, uh, more, you know, more, more interesting. And here I see the building, um, it's a, uh, it's like a, 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 a floating building, and on the ground you see a podium which is uh, covered all in green. And also we provide the green roof uh, on the uh, on the very top. So so we actually create these two layers of nature: one on the ground, the other one uh, in the sky. So uh, so this. Underneath the building, we can provide a lot of shading, um, and uh, there's a there's an arch underneath the building because we we had the two parts and they're uh, they're connected through this a big bridge, right? And underneath become the the gateway. It's actually open public space, but people can walk through it and go into this uh sorry uh so it's a called uh, exposition park so where you know people can walk through the the gateway and enter so there's a natural history museum and a space museum and other you know uh museums um Oh, seems I can. I think uh, I think Mars um, attempting to reconnect again. Um, thank you for your patience, everyone. Um, we've got just a few more slides to go, so hopefully he can return. Here he is. I, oh, we have camera. Yeah, because I, I fixed my camera. <laughs> oh, that's, that's that's good. Uh, okay, so this model shows a gateway, right? So, so the building is not the, just the architecture itself; it's also quite urban. It's, it's a, it, it provides this uh, urban space underneath, and here's a construction, and the buildings are round, and uh, and there's a, a, a nice park uh, next to it. So, uh, we'll we'll build this a gateway. The building become a gate where people can pass in underneath and enter the park. So here the like the gate. And this this space is a, is an open urban space, uh, but uh, it's also underneath uh, our building. And from here people can enter the museum from both sides. On the left hand side is the museum entrance, on the right hand side is the education wing. So uh, you can enter from either side and then they're connected. Uh, uh, anyhow, inside, um, and there's uh, also opening uh, hole uh, uh, where you can observe the sky. And here you see the uh, the building floating above waterfall. Actually, it's a cooling tower behind the water. It's, so it's a sustainable technology, uh, but uh, it shows the natural uh, feeling. We find this. Uh, uh, um, feeling like a little bit like a cloud. It's a floating above you, right? It's, uh, the form, the form of the building is very organic. It cannot uh, clearly describe, you know, what what this look like, right? So it's a little bit of formless, like a cloud as well. I think I think cloud, for me, is also very mysterious and. Uh, Make people curious what's in it. You know, we, we we create a lot of stories about 
what's above the, the cloud, right? So that's something, um, curiosity, I think also comes together with the surrealness of architecture. And somehow the, I think for cultural facilities, we go there often uh, to see the content, to see the exhibits, uh, but also more important, we want to um, have some um, emotional connection to the history or to the story, to the narrative, right? So it's a, it's a journey of a discovery it's a, or understanding. Uh, so I think the curiosity is, is, is something architecture has to provide. So here's a construction photo. Uh, okay, this is the last one. Uh, we're uh, building uh, in Shenzhen, uh, a, a big Chinese city. Uh, this uh, two museums together. Uh, uh, here you see the, uh, the top view. Uh, there are a series of rocks. <laughs> they look like uh, stones, right? Uh, and then they we put them on this uh, uh, landscaping uh, ground. It, it's like this, right? It's a uh, it, it's in the center of the high rise uh, zone, so you see many modern towers. But here, we don't want to make a big building; we want to make a park. So you see the green um, green uh, area is actually a roof of the museum. There's a single floor uh, exhibition space underneath, uh, and the the roof become open space and, and and the park. And then on top of it, we put some special galleries with a very tall uh, space or with with very large horizontal space and outside experience, uh, outside appearance feels like uh, uh, rocks from billions of years ago. It's a little bit uh, um, out of place, I would say. It's a not, I mean, you can say this is not contextual, but at the same time, it, it creates this um, 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 vac vacuum space okay? um, between the reality, between the, 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 you know, the cities around us and this area. I think that's the goal. That's the important for us to, to create what we call historical future. So we have these two elements nothing modern, nothing contemporary. We withdraw all the reality, letting people fall in, fell into the, this uh, abstraction. And when you turn around, there is the center exit. Here you can walk to this park and then eventually you see the ocean in front of the city. Um, surprisingly, when you don't see other buildings, uh, this building fits more than nature, right? Because <laughs> the background is, it's, uh, it's, it's always been there. It's, it's a, you know, the horizon, the sky, sun, you know, the nature element. And we want our building talks more to that. Uh, remind people, remind everyone in our daily life that we need to enlarge our scale of time. We want to, you know, people f realize we are living in a bigger um, world, not just focus on what, what, what's, what's the day. So I think that's, uh, we the atmosphere we want to create here. Here, from different angle, you see this, this rocks and this uh, relationship. You don't, you don't, you can, you can say this rock, but you don't find this kind of a 
composition in real nature. Uh, it's obviously artificial. And here, uh, uh, we also uh, created this uh, uh, ramp where you can climb the rock and you can go up to, to there. And then we, we planned the amphitheater on the rock so they can, you know, having the show uh, on the rock. Inside this building, you also, you know, have this uh, vertical space, you know, natural light. Uh, finally, there's a, you remember, there's a hanging small rock uh, in our image. That's the space in it. Uh, you don't see any other buildings. So you lost all the reference of time or cultural, you know, context. It's a little bit uh, lost, May maybe a little bit uh, um, uncomfortable. It's because, <laughs> because, I mean, like everyone, we we feel more comfortable to have a reference. You know, we, 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 we feel comfortable when there's some more information provide, provided to us. So, so, we, so we are being told uh, about something. So we, we, we read the stories, we got information. But, but more, um, I think more important is the next step we start to um, observe the inner side of us, ourselves, right? We, we find something in, inside our, our spirit and uh, that required uh, we uh, block some informations uh, from outside and um, I think architecture, especially the museum's cultural space, um, should uh, provide that opportunity. So we don't have a too much um, uh, reference for people, like telling you what is this about, but we letting everyone um, being sensitive to to their um, inner uh, feelings and uh, have their own thought. Um, so somehow, I, I think uh, public space in this case, you know, in this image, for example, only one person. It it could be two person <laughs> or or more people, but number of people is not the key. I think it's uh, like how much people could can can get, you know, uh, spiritually uh, from such space is a key. Um, it, it, um, it, I think um, escaping from the reality, it's uh, one way. Um, and uh, surrealness, uh, it's uh, something architecture can do and uh, and uh, that's something I like to uh, to do, especially when I see the uh, the building uh, contacts and the, the people uh, um, daily life uh, in this context. I, I feel I feel that in our modern. Uh, cities and uh, philosophies, we, we often talk efficiencies, productions, you know, commercial values, all this. Um, and when I look back to some traditional art forms, it's including architecture, um, uh, the functionality um, is only part of it. It's a it's, it's not the, um, the, the don't let go. So, so I think somehow I feel that's make architecture sustainable more because <laughs> when we learn from those classic historical buildings, their um, cultural heritage, right? They, 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 the material, the technology already become old, but we still learn from them 
and uh, we 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 want to understand the philosophy behind them. Those are very important in architecture. I hope what we are doing today can also deliver the same energy uh, to the future. Okay, that's all my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I think that was a really powerful uh, point to end on. Um, the idea that are surreal, and I, I would call that I would call your projects joyful. Um, we we have a uh, an A plus awards category that we recently introduced called Architecture Plus Joy, um, and I think it speaks to this this idea that um, buildings that can bring out these kind of emotions in people and take them somewhere else, um, they have a timeless quality. Um, and like you said, um, you know, apart from uh energy efficiency and functionality um timelessness is also a form of sustainability when it comes to architecture um i think that was that was wonderful i love the kindergarten uh the courtyard kindergarten um one of my favorites um the Harbin opera house as well and these new projects incredible <clears throat> so we only have three minutes so i have to apologize oh. in advance to everybody um, who's asked a question because I think that we've had more questions than ever before. Um, I'm just going to ask you a couple of um, questions um, really quickly. Um, sure. uh, a couple of the most popular ones. So Brian uh, says the designs are beautiful, but how do you progress through the detailing and construction documents for buildings like these? Um, you must have a deep technical team to produce the documents for the builders to follow. Um, he says, he asks, uh, do you engage with uh, contractors very early on and how are they involved in your design process? Yeah, we, we had to, um, um, to have all the contractors, consultant teams join very early because we, 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 we've been working on several projects. We know some teams, uh, they're also familiar uh, familiar with the way we work, so we, we like this uh, conversation. And uh, as an architect, I think we, we work a little bit more like artists, um, like uh, artist studios, like you discover things during the process. Sometimes we come with a concept at the beginning, very large, very rough, but uh, during the process, you refine, refine, refine. And architecture takes a longer time, right? Sometimes years. So you, you, you can always develop, always uh, refine it and develop the details uh, to the end. Wonderful. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to pick one more um, from Sei Chun, uh, Chun Liu. Um, they ask, uh, is, is there anything, um, a book or art or a building that you recently saw um, and found incredibly inspiring? Um, and anything that um, may be inspiring your next work? Oh, uh, today, you know, my 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 title was uh, Surreal Land. Actually, I was reading, I forgot his name. Sorry, but the, uh, it, it, you know, the project called uh, the City in the in the in America is in the desert uh, by by artist. It's it's a land art project. It's called the City. I think you can you can you can Google it. It's a beautiful. It takes fifty years. I think I think the real work is time. And then architecture, the beauty of architecture is that it it creates um, during a certain amount of time and it will exist for longer time. And uh, how we deal with uh, history and uh, you know how we deal with ourselves. That's 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 a you know, that's a part of your life. I think the time is it, something really magic in architecture. Um, so that that's a la one piece of land art I really uh, love. I, I recommend you, you see some land arts. Was it, um, was it by any chance um, Michael Heiser? Was that his name? I just Googled oh, it. <laughs> is, is it him? Oh, I, I don't we think maybe. Uh, it it, it yeah. took all your boxes. It took Michael Heiser, also, I like the spiral. It's a, it's a very, yeah, yeah. I, very nice. Um, wonderful. Um, 
So Fiona, who is Mars colleague, has um, very generously offered um, a little giveaway. Um, so um, Mad um, have this incredible book. Um, uh, let me just see. Uh, where is it? I've lost. Oh, here we are. Uh, Mad Rhapsody, I believe, is the name the name of the book. Um, and we're going to give away uh, three copies of the book um, to people that have, have attended today. So um, we can follow up with an email to three lucky winners of that incredible book um, very soon. Um, and also for those of you who have um, responded in the poll asking for an A-plus awards submission guide, um, more information about the awards program, um, we will send you an email as well with that information. Um, and if there's anybody else that, that's interested in following the footsteps of, of Ma um, and Mad, um, definitely respond to that poll. We'll keep it open for a few more minutes. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I'm sorry to everybody that I didn't manage to get to your questions. I've never seen so many questions, but I think that tells you what a fantastic lecture this was um, and how inspiring these projects are. Um, thank you so much, Ma. Um, this is our first ever live talk that we've done between New York and, and China, um, <laughs> the, the first of many. Um, it's, a, it's a truly global celebration, um, truly global platform on Architizer. And I think that um, our, our kind of friendship with Mad Architects is a great representation of that. Um, so thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. It's a fun uh, evening for me. Thank you, everybody. And hope to see you uh, at our next live event very soon. Thanks. Thanks again, Ma. Thank you. Bye-bye.